As I sat alone in my dimly lit living room, the ominous shadows seemed to creep closer with every passing minute. It was a stormy night, and the thunder outside echoed through the empty rooms of my old creaky house. I had always been a fan of horror movies, but I never imagined that I would be living one. My parents had left for a weekend getaway, and I had foolishly insisted on staying home alone. The idea of having the entire house to myself was initially thrilling, but now, as the clock struck midnight, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not alone at all. I tried to dismiss my unease as mere paranoia, but the subtle sounds of footsteps on the creaky floorboards upstairs made my heart race. With trembling hands, I clutched the TV remote and turned up the volume, hoping the distraction would drown out my irrational fears. Just as I began to relax, the power went out, plunging the room into darkness. Panic set in, and my imagination ran wild. I fumbled for my phone to use its flashlight, but it was dead. The only source of light was the occasional flash of lightning outside, casting eerie, fleeting silhouettes on the walls. Then I heard it, an eerie whisper, barely audible over the howling wind. Come play with us, it hissed, the words sending shivers down my spine. I could hardly breathe as I strained to locate the source of the sound. The voice seemed to come from the hallway upstairs. Summoning every ounce of courage, I crept up the creaking staircase, each step a nerve-wracking symphony of sounds. As I reached the top, a gust of cold wind rushed through the open window at the end of the hall, extinguishing the lone candle that had been my guiding light. I was plunged back into darkness. I reached the window, trembling fingers feeling for the latch to close it. Just as I secured the latch, a shadowy figure appeared in the corner of my eye. A young girl, her nightgown tattered, stood at the end of the hall. Her face was pallid, and her eyes were black voids. Come play with us, she repeated, her voice now accompanied by the distant sound of children's laughter. I stumbled backward in terror, scrambling to find my way in the pitch black hallway. As I fumbled for my phone, I could hear more whispering voices closing in on me from all directions. They seemed to be emanating from the walls themselves. Panic surged through me as I desperately dialed my parents' number, praying for them to answer. Please, please pick up, I muttered to myself. Just as I thought all hope was lost, a faint voice came through the static. Hello, who is this? It was my dad's voice, filled with concern. Dad, it's me. I need you to come home right now. There's something in the house, something unnatural, I pleaded. My dad's voice was calm, but there was a hint of disbelief. It's just your imagination, sweetheart. You're alone in the house. You'll be fine. Tears streamed down my face as I realized they wouldn't be coming home anytime soon. I couldn't stay in the hallway surrounded by those haunting whispers. I had to make a run for it. Gathering every ounce of courage I had left, I sprinted back down the stairs and into the kitchen. The whispers followed, growing louder and more menacing with each step. The shadows seemed to claw at my heels as I reached the front door. Just as I flung it open and rushed outside, the storm intensified, rain pouring down in torrents. But I didn't stop running. I ran through the dark, wet streets, not daring to look back. The whispers and the laughter echoed in my ears until I reached a neighbor's house and pounded on the door. They took me in, offering me warmth and safety. As I recounted my harrowing experience, they exchanged worried glances. You're not the first person to have seen or heard strange things in that house, one of them said. It's been empty for years, but the stories persist. I never returned to that house and my parents sold it shortly after my terrifying encounter. To this day, I can't explain what happened that night. Was it a manifestation of my fear and imagination, or did something truly malevolent lurk within those walls? I may never know, but I've learned to trust my instincts and never underestimate the darkness that can reside within even the most familiar of places.